Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the firmware on your TFT35. Uh, last week I did a video showing you how to install that and I wanted to follow that up with a guide on how to upgrade the firmware. Um, so I'll link to the install guide below as well, but first let's talk about why you want to upgrade the firmware. So really, there's two reasons. One, there might be some feature enhancements that would be beneficial that you're looking for. Um, that's not as common as reason number two, which is really going to be the main reason, and that is for bug fixes. So it seems like there is a lot of um, bugginess in the code, and they have uh, pretty frequent releases. Uh, I think it's probably every three or four months, maybe even more frequent, that they're doing releases and um, fixing some of those bugs for you. So you have a couple options. One, you can use the pre-compiled releases that they create every couple months, every three to four months, whatever it ends up being. Or two, you can um, go ahead and choose to compile your own firmware. Um, you can do that more frequently because they have just code changes and stuff, so you can get the latest changes. Uh, I for what we're looking at now, I wouldn't recommend going that route unless there's something very specific you're looking for that you can't wait for the next release. Um, but for this, I wouldn't want to uh, try to do the uh, custom firmware and go through all of that because you're going to have to do it again in a couple weeks or a month anyway. And it's just, to me, not worth it. Uh, if you feel differently, please leave a comment below kind of talking about why. I'm very interested to hear that. All right, so before we jump in, uh, you will need one thing. You're gonna need an SD card. Uh, here I've got a, a micro SD card uh, to an SD adapter, um, but that just gives me what I need, but you will need a standard SD card of some sort in order to do this. Uh, I believe based on the GitHub page, they said it has to be less than eight gig and um, FAT32 formatted, which we'll walk through that when we jump over to the computer. All right, so first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and take a look at the printer and get the exact version of the board that we have and the firmware version that we're on now. Um, I didn't actually check to see what version came with this. I just did the install last week. Uh, this card was ordered a couple weeks ago, so it probably has a relatively new build on it. But that's probably not going to be the case for everybody watching this video. So I want to show you how to actually uh, check to see what version you're on. And then we'll go over to GitHub and I'll show you some of the uh, release notes showing you what changed between the releases. Uh, so if you have a specific issue and you're looking to see if they fixed it, um, that's where you're going to want to go. And again, I'll have links to all of that in the description below. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the printer and get started. All right, guys, I went ahead and powered on the printer. Uh, before we get started, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. All right, so now let's go ahead and uh, take a look to see what firmware we have on here. So you're going to want to go to Menu, uh, Settings, and uh, Info. So this is telling me the board and the current firmware. So the board is the TFT35 E3 version 3. And the firmware is uh, TFT35 E3 version 3.0.26, which was released on April 11th. So I don't know if there's going to be a newer one, but we can take a look. Either way, I will walk through the upgrade process. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to the computer and get it started. All right, guys, so we're here at the computer, and I have Big Tree Tech's uh, GitHub account up. Um, this is going to be the firmware for uh, really the TFT35 along with the other models that they have. Uh, first thing I wanted to show you was the release notes. So from the home page, if you go to releases and go down and just click on this plus four releases, you'll see um, the previous five releases in here and everything that they've changed. So if you go down to um, the dot .21 release, you can see the uh, two fixes that they had in that firmware. Same here with the dot .22, they had some fixes to help clean some things up and some enhancements around the filament runout detection, uh, as you can see here. Um, going up to the dot .25 release, uh, that was a pretty big change. They introduced the new UI. So before that, if you have um, this UI, uh, it's going to be one of the older versions. Uh, you'd have to go to the dot .25 or later to get this new UI, which I think looks a lot better. Um, and it also goes into more detail around all the changes. 
I didn't want to spend a lot of time going into uh, each one of the change sets. I don't think it's too important. I just wanted to show you uh, where you would look to see them if you're looking to see if they fixed any specific changes in that release. So the dot 26 also had um, quite a bit of new features and bug fixes. Uh, this was back in April, so it's going to be the same version I already have on the board now, uh, but that's fine. We'll just lay down the same thing. But being that this was back in April, I would expect that they're going to have a new one coming up pretty soon. The previous one was in November, so that was a five-month difference. Yeah, so we're right around that mark. Going to the one before that, it was... A couple months so September to November so it really just depends what they're working on um, but if you were looking at all of the recent code check-ins you could uh, compile custom builds based on like their nightly builds but again I don't think it's worth it you're potentially introducing code that hasn't been fully tested uh, so I would just stick with um, their actual releases unless you had a specific reason all right so let's go back to the main page here kind of go down and talk about um, what you have to do so there's really going to be three things we have to grab it's going to be the dot bin file which is the firmware a config file and the tft35 folder um, the config.ini file has some changes that you could go through and modify if you wanted to customize things I'm not going to do that this time around. I haven't had a need to, but if you are interested in tweaking, uh, you could go that route. Um, here's what I was talking about where they mentioned you would have to have a card smaller than 8 gig uh, formatted in, with FAT32. Now I'm not sure if it'll be an issue if the card is larger than 8 gig. Um, I guess it's something I could probably try one of these days. The only card that I have right now is quite small. Uh, it's definitely under the 8 gig mark, so I won't be able to actually test that. Uh, but let's go ahead and format the SD card. So I'm going to bring up Explorer. Um, it's going to be removable disk F for me. Um, so I'm going to just right click on that and go to format. Now, if you've already done this before, you don't have to repeat the process. It's just a one-time thing. Uh, if you haven't, you will want to just run through it once. It doesn't take long. Uh, but you just want to change the file system from FAT to FAT32. And um, just go ahead and do a quick format. And just hit start. You'll see it basically takes no time at all. If it's a new card that you're using, it'll pretty much prompt you to format it as soon as you plug it in and we're done all right so that's ready all right so now what we're going to want to do is go download all the repository here so we'll just go up to code and download zip and that's just going to pull down everything we need and the entire contents of this repo is 35 meg so it's not large um i'm just going to show in folder here so here's our download here let's go ahead and extract it just go to extract all Uh, there's a lot of files here, so it might take a minute. All right, so that's extracted. I'm going to go ahead and open up this folder, and then I'm also going to open up my uh, SD card here. All right, guys, before we go ahead and copy the firmware over to the uh, SD card, I wanted to take a look to see when the last time it was updated because um, this 26 days ago doesn't quite match this version. So they might have actually had another release that isn't actually called out here. So it's worth checking out. All right, so let's go ahead and drill into this one with the material theme because that's what we wanted. And if we look here, all right, so it does look like it was updated 26 days ago. I don't know the exact version, um, but it's going to have a, ver a date sometime in September. So I would expect to see that when we go ahead and update the firmware, not the uh, April 11th date. If we scroll down here, we can see that this is the 26.1 firmware. Um, so I'm assuming that that recently came out and the dot one was just a bug fix, not a minor. Um, so we'll verify that when we're uh, on the printer itself. But this is where we want to get this from. Uh, so I'll walk you through the process of moving the files we need over to the SD card now. All right, so there's two things we want to take a look at here. So we have um, the base firmware, and then we have the new UI one here, which is the material theme. If we go back to uh, this page, it shows you the classic icon theme and then the material icon theme. 
Um, this is the one that I want to use. If you want it to go back to this one, you can. Um, you would just copy the contents from this folder instead of this one. Uh, but it kind of goes over which folder is what here. Uh, so let's just go back over here. So we're going to want three things. Um, we're going to want the TFT35, uh, the config I and I. So let's go ahead and copy those over first. And while that's copying, we want to get the .bin file that matches the board that we have. So there's the TFT35 v3, and then there's the v3 e3. And if you remember back uh, earlier in the video where I showed you uh, what board there was along with the firmware that's on it under the info screen, uh, that's where you'll know which one you need to use. Uh, come on. So I have the uh, V3 E3 board, uh, which I don't like how they have it there. It should probably be E3 and then the version 3.0, but uh, it is what it is. So let's just go ahead and copy that over as well. And like I was mentioning, if you wanted to uh, make any tweaks here, you could. You would just uh, edit it with Notepad or uh, Notepad++ or whatever editor you have. And then you can go through and see everything that they have in here and see if there are any tweaks that you wanted to make. Uh, I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to leave it as default. Um, but it is an option if you wanted to start making some changes. Uh, so I'm just going to close out of this. All right, so that's really all we need. Um, let's go ahead and eject this and jump back over to the printer and I'll show you how to actually install it. So just eject here. All right, now let's jump back over to the printer. All right guys, so over on the right of the board, you'll see an SD slot. You're gonna wanna insert the SD card there. All right, when that's in, let's go ahead and power it on. Then you can see there that it went ahead and started uploading the firmware from the card onto it automatically. Um, so this process should only take a, I don't know, a minute or so. All right, we're almost done with the updating. I wanted to go ahead and start uh, recording again here. As you can see, it finished the actual upload and then it's updating everything from what's on the card. I think the total process so far took about a minute. Now it's just pulling in all of the items from that TFT35 folder which has all of the images and fonts. Now I'm going to walk you through the calibration of the touch screen. And then it'll see uh, success if it was good. All right, so if you get this fail to enable bed leveling error on startup, it's because you have a BL touch and you don't have a mesh stored. So we can fix that by going over to menu and go to movement, ABL or auto bed leveling, and just do start. Uh, that should go through and create the mesh and then save it. Um, so I'm going to let it run through that really quick and then I'll update uh, you guys when it's done. All right, when it's done, when you go to leave the screen, it's going to give you the option to save the ABL profile to the EEPROM. Um, just go ahead and hit OK. And then that saved it there. So now if we go to back and you'll see that ABL is on now. So let's go ahead and power off and power back on, make sure we have no issues. All right, so it looks good. Now, if you were still getting the issue where it's unable to connect to the printer, if you go to menu, uh, go to settings, go down to connection, um, and then you can change the rate here. Uh, depending upon the board you have, uh, you might have to change it. Uh, the default one worked for the SKR Mini E3 V2. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be the case with the previous boards or not, 
but if you still have a connection issue, this is where you would fix it. So I would go straight to the next one and try it. And now let's go to make sure we got everything uh, updated right. So if we go back into menu, go to settings, go to info, we'll see all of the details here. All right, so as you can see here, we're on the latest version, which is the September 12th, 2020 release that we we're upgrading to. Uh, we have the board called out and then it just tells us how much of the memory and stuff that we've used. And uh, that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, uh, go and leave a comment below. I'll try to help out as much as I can. Thanks. All right, guys, so that's the process to upgrade the firmware. As you can see, it was really easy. Uh, there's not much to it at all. It's just moving a couple files around, plugging it into the printer, and uh, letting the printer do its job. This entire process can typically be done in less than 10 minutes once you know what you're doing. Uh, so I would recommend that you keep an eye out for releases, maybe check every I don't know, three or four months, see if they have a new one and just uh, go ahead and upgrade it just to get those bug fixes. If you do have any issues with the process or uh, need some help, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Thanks.